I guess the first thing I should do is thank everybody who made this day necessary. I love you, girls. Ah, the great theater that is the Hall of Fame spotlight with an attendance of one. Keith Costas profiling <laughs> each of these guys for us over the next couple weeks, leading to the announcement a week from Tuesday on MLB Network. And today we're talking about Jeff Kent. Keith, take it away. Yeah, Harold teased it yesterday, said it was a guy he feels strongly about. And we all know the case for Jeff Kent. It's basically... A very simple case, an offensive second baseman who put up historic numbers at the position. So by way of review, here are some of those numbers. Obviously, first in home runs all time at that position. That's all of his home runs, not just as a second baseman, but almost all of them came while playing the position. The RBIs, guys, I think at the time, that had just as much to do with the home run hitting in terms of how he was regarded. He averaged 110 RBIs over his nine-year peak. That led the National League in that span. But you have to consider what the context was, guys. He was hitting behind Barry Bonds for a good portion of that time. He had the most played appearances with runners on base by a good margin in that nine-year span. Now, 307 and a 912 OPS, obviously nothing to scoff at, but look at those rankings. You have to remember what offense was like in that time. So we try and look at it context neutral here. Now, this is not the be all end all, obviously, guys. You can call me a nerd and say, you hit the most home runs on second baseman. That's the end of the case. And I would say, fine, that's reasonable. But here's his offensive war. Just twice did he rank among the top 25 players in baseball. That's at all positions in terms of what he did offensively. Now, you look at other second basemen that aren't in the Hall of Fame, how many times they ranked in the top five at second base. Kent did it seven times. Now, these are great players, but I'm not sure. Was Jeff Kent a better player than Chase Utley? Was he a better player than Lou Whitaker? Was he a better player than Bobby Gritch, Willie Randolph? I don't know. I didn't see some of those guys play, but that feels like an appropriate group to put him with. Davey Lopes, another guy who was kind of a one-trick pony, just stole a ton of bases. Are we going to put him in the Hall of Fame? So I don't really have a strong opinion about Jeff Kent one way or another, but he's right on that line for me, guys, and it's a hard line to decipher. Mm. Uh, what, what is your – how do you kind of – Work your way around all this for Kent, because you know, I have an opinion on him too. Yeah, I'll okay. Um, the the hard part for me, and I don't know if you feel this way, uh, Keith, but there are certain players that have done such a fine job in their career, and their career numbers put them in a place where comparables come. So guys that are already in the Hall of Fame, Ryan Sandberg and others, you say to yourself, if A is in the Hall of Fame then Jeff Kent has to be in the Hall of Fame. And I don't know, I'm not a, b a believer in that, to tell you the truth, uh, but a lot of people are. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of people, you know, the, the guy at second base that is held up in this discussion is Bill Mazeroski, mm -hmm. right? He was voted in by the Veterans Committee. Mazeroski's numbers pale in comparison to those of Jeff Kent. I get it, different era for sure, and that has to be taken into consideration. But for me, when you hit more homers than anybody else that's played your position, that's a Hall of Famer. And, and in the absence of police activity on the back of that baseball card, and for Jeff Kent, there was none. There was a little kind of mistruth about a car wash. Uh, but, you know, I think he's a Hall of Famer based on the fact that he's hit more homers than anybody else that's ever played second base. Pretty simple one for me. And I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to get too far into the minutia of comps and um, playing in the PED era or not. It's just the back of the baseball card for me says Hall of Famer. You know, what's interesting, Keith, is that you brought up something very interesting, and that is is that we still don't have that analytic or stat for percentage of runners driven in. You know, we think about runs batted in, we think about a hitting under pressure, this or that, but, I mean, if given the opportunity with hundreds of runners on and you don't drive a big percentage in, does that diminish your RBI total? Yep, that's a really good point. And, you know, I, the only guy on this ballot that I feel stronger about is Billy Wagner, and we've talked about him. But uh, Kent's going to be interesting. I, has his vote, Keith, gone, you know, has it fluctuated at all from year to year because he is a returnee to the ballot? He has support, but it feels like it's kind of leveling off to me. And, guys, I completely agree with what you're saying. If you want to say that his Hall of Fame case is one sentence, most home runs ever, by a second baseman. I think that's completely legitimate, and if the argument ends there for you guys, that's fine. I'd have no problem with it being in the Hall of Fame. We talked comps a little. There are a couple guys on the ballot that I think are worth bringing up in terms of the voting trends. Now, we have 41 known voters on the Hall of Fame tracker that voted for Kent, and about 25% of them did not have Scott Rowland on their ballot. 
I'm not really sure how you justify that when you look at the offensive numbers. The OPS Plus is almost exactly the same. The home runs are more for Kent, but in the same general range. And Roland, obviously, a legendary defender. So I do think it's hard to compare guys at different positions, but sometimes you look and it's the numbers are close and one guy has a glove and one guy doesn't. It's hard to justify one over another. Now, this one was even more stark to me, guys. Like I said, 41 known votes for Kent. One of the 41 has voted for Torrey Hunter, whose county numbers are basically the same, and is an all-time great defender in center field. So these are the kind of slippery slope arguments comparing players you get into on the Hall of Fame ballot. Like I said, I've got no problem if Kent goes into the Hall of Fame, but this is the kind of rabbit hole you fall down when you get closer to that line of who's in and who's out. Well, that Torrey Hunter board is really interesting. Yeah. You're right, the counting numbers are almost a push, and the nine straight gold gloves, man, that should separate Torrey and, or at least even out the vote count. But right, and 41 to one, guys. Like I said, one of the 41 who voted for Kent thinks Torrey's a Hall of Famer. I'm not sure Torrey's a Hall of Famer, but that seems like a hard gap to justify to me. That's wild. I think it puts us right back to where it usually does, and that is offensive numbers are looked at with scrutiny, and defensive numbers like, well, yeah, he was a good fielder. That's I mean, right. Keith, important. thanks for that. By the way, you know, we should pay off the car wash story because the year that Jeff Kent told everybody that he was washing his car and fell off his truck when, in fact, he was riding his motorcycle and <laughs> didn't want the club to know about it, he went on to have a great, not good, but great season and didn't miss as much time as was feared. Yeah. So the, the car wash thing became kind of a punchline. But uh, look, great career. We'll see what the writers have to say. It makes it, the writers look bad. No, it doesn't. I, I think it does. Come on. I think it doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> go back to your breakfast, Harold.